Now, we're going to take this TD carburetor and we're going to cut out the bushing. Now, one of the things that you want to do, or what we do, is we measure the length of this bushing with, a, with our vernier. And we're going to see how long it is, because they all kind of vary a little bit. And uh, this one measures uh, six, 620 thousandths. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract a sixteenth of an inch because what we want to do is we've got a, a piloted cutter that's going to come in and stop on this edge and we're going to stop short of the, of the bore of the carburetor and I usually like to do it about one sixteenth of an inch. The reason why is that we want to keep the curve of the bushing uh, uh, tight to the butterfly. You don't want to have a big square cut, if you know what I mean, where, where if, you, if you machine straight through and then put a, a bushing with a square edge in here and stopping short, you're going to get a vacuum leak beyond, be, be around the throttle shaft and you won't be able to control the idle. Now, the tools that we're using are uh, designed by me uh, uh, many years ago, and um, they're pretty fool, fuel pr fool proof, and it doesn't require special equipment. We, do, we use a drill press. We don't have a milling machine or anything like that. Uh, the tool itself, and this is one from a for the inch and a quarter is a has got a long pilot and then it this end up here cuts out the body to the diameter of the bushings that we have so with this pilot this will slide in and center nicely and then you can cut this body and this is the stop we use you can cut it short of the of the throat like a sixteenth of an inch and then you'll have a nice cut you put the bushing in and then you do that on one side and then you flip it around and you pile it off of the new bushing with again the same shaft and you cut this side once that's done and the bushings are in we're going to use a, a, a piloted reamer which now this is this pilot is one diameter and then this is the finished size that we want. So let's go over the drill press and we'll uh, uh, run a bushing. So here we are. The pilot's through. I'm resting it on this, my angle plate. And it's just going to cut down. And now, on an H-type carburetor, you always wind up with a little piece of the bottom edge of the bushing. So, and that, when that kind of breaks loose, it stops cutting. So now we put this back in, we took out that little piece, and we come down, and we finish our cut. Now, down in the hole, you can see maybe some little serrations on the outer edge. That's where the old bushing was. And since we're going in deeper, you'll see a nice clean 360 cut in the aluminum. Uh, that's what matches up to this piece. Now, H-types, You, whenever you're changing bushings, you want to put the bushing in with Loctite. We use a green Loctite. Uh, And there's two different types of green Loctite. There's one for kind of smaller clearances. Can't see much on that. And then they've got one that's got a that's very thick. So if you had a a a a a, a, a hole that was not round anymore, and and you felt the bushing was too loose, this Loctite is the stuff to use. Uh, or in in a pinch, you could use JB Weld if it was really whipped. Now, 
you put this in so that the fluid, the, 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 the Loctite flows around it. And we've got a little installer here. And you see we're putting it in. And there it stopped. It's it stopped short of the the throat like we want on that little step in here. So now you're going to let that dry for for a little bit, and we come back to this cutter again. Now what we're doing is we're we're piloting off of the fresh the fresh bushing on the bottom, and now we're going to come back in. Take another cut. We're going to pull out that little piece of uh, bushing there. And there we go. It's gone down to our predetermined depth. And we're going to put, put the bushing in. Now we've had these bushings made. Uh, by the machine shop and they've got a little bit of a lead here little taper and the other trick part of this bushing is that the inside diameter is is slightly undersized I mean we're we're going for like a 313 thousandths that's like one thousandth over five sixteenths on the inside diameter so when we make these bushings uh, I have him make the inside diameter to be like 309. So the purpose of that is that even if these bushings go in a little cockeyed, when we get the final tapered reamer in, it, it's going to take a it's going to take a, a beautiful clean cut, and and you'll come up with the size that you want, and um, it'll be straight. And, and 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 accurate uh, again going back the H type and the HS's you cannot remove the bushing unless you cut it out like what we've done uh, we've had plenty of guys attempt to do it uh, go to their local machine shop he looks at it as a let's remove the bushing problem and next thing you know they've yanked out the bushing and maybe cracked the body uh, so yeah, you, this is really the right way to do it. You can't, there are other ways to do it if you had a milling machine, uh, but this simple drill press most guys have in their shop and we're, you're, you're okay. So now this bushing, this, this reamer is piloting off of these two new bushings and the... It's going to cut. Now, I make these reamers, I have these reamers, so that when it comes out past the cut, this is the same size as the new pilot. So it's, it's most, most reamers, the cutting edge is maybe a half inch up from the, from the, from the tip, and then it tapers back. Well, with these reamers, because of what we want to do, you're gonna you're you're cutting the back bushing by piloting off the front, and then once you're through this, you're gonna you're gonna pilot off the back bush and cut the front one. Now, this bushing up here, I gotta go slow. So now it's it's. You've got two bushings, brand new, in the body, and they're, they're, they're now in alignment. Uh, the next part of this is to, replace, is to replace the shaft. Now, I took a shaft, and we've already trimmed it and, and cut it to size. Uh, when you when you're trimming the our shaft we make is an eight inch long shaft and you can flip flop it around to if you've got different offsets uh, whether it's a for a TD 
or some other car, uh, we leave plenty of room so that you can you can have one shaft and it'll do multiple applications. And what we would do is you would put a put a throttle shaft screw in, screw the two shafts back together, put a little score mark with a file on each end, and then trim it either with your hacksaw or we use a lathe. And then that will give you the right right length and the right offset. So now this now another trick is on the original shaft there's a little hole here and this hole is from the the throttle stop that used to be on it so when you go now to fit this this side this is the side that had the throttle stop and you can see the mark where the old where the idle screw went and that's always a little little trick in case you forget which way things are going is look for that little mark because that'll tell you then where this item was like that now before you put the 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 butterfly before you put the throttle stop in you've got to fit the butterfly and one of the questions or one of the things that everybody asks is is that little hole in there and sad to say, it's not. The uh, I believe, and I'm, and I'm only from the way that I see how these things are, is that these things were all individually drilled on the SU assembly line. Uh, so we're going to fit. Uh, back a little bit. We're going to fit two new butterfly screws and the pin. So you've you've got the you've got the butterfly fitted. You're going to put in the screws. Now, these are little special screws. First of all, they are a Whitworth thread. Uh, they're countersunk with a little oval head here. And they've got this little split in the end of it. Now, that split is so that in case this screw loosens up, it's, it's not going to come out and get ingested with the engine. If you don't think that that happens, I can tell you a few stories. So you you want to use the correct screw, preferably new ones. Uh, uh, and if you can't get new ones, certainly put a drop of Loctite on it. And again, you can. There's always a little life left in the old ones. You can you can splay the ends a little bit now. You've got that butterfly fitted, tighten it nice, and now you see that, they're, that the, the little end of the screw is sticking through, and we're now going to take a little screwdriver and sort of split the end, you know, stick it in the slot and just give it a little twist, and you want that to be just a little bit bigger. So in case this thing should come loose, it's not going to get ingested into the engine. Uh, the other thing, if you notice how nice and tight we are here where the shaft and the and the bushing is, because we, we've, we've kept the original contour, and th that means that we will not have any air leakage coming around uh, the shaft. Now, I lost. It. Here we go. Now, this little guy. This is the throttle stop for this one. So it goes on there, and what you're going to do, you can either for for setting up for drilling, you can either put a little shim, a little shim. In this area, or I usually use the the actual idle screw. And what you want to do is set it so that this arm and this tab are parallel. So you, now this is a little critical because 
if you do not leave enough clearance here, down here, the 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 screw will become very sensitive. So, you know, you can take a half a turn and it'll jump the RPM, you know, uh, you know, 100, 150 RPM. Whereas if it's paralleled and in the right position, you can get a much finer adjustment. Uh, now, we do this a little, a lot of guys try to do this in a dividing head or they want to, they want to kind of reinvent the wheel. I feel that this is the way it was done at the factory because we've done so many of them and when you see how I do it, that if it always comes out the same way or pretty close to it, that's, that's why I think. So now we're going to take out the cutter, we're going to use a 1 8 drill bit and we're going to pin that. Now our shafts when we sell them come with a, 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 a half inch long 1 8 one eighth roll pin. Uh, the original pins were a little solid steel tapered pin. Now this is where it looks a little crazy, uh, but I'm going to hold the butterfly close with my thumb and I'm going to hold down on the screw. Now once you put this thing in and you feel around a bit, So now we've got an entrance hole and we've pretty much come out through the existing hole on the other side. So we, we have about a 90% chance of doing that. Uh, again, based on what, you know, that I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, now we take the little 1 8 roll pin, put it in the hole and tap it down. And it's set. So now, if you look at the shaft and the and the footing, you've got a nice. It's parallel in there. Uh, it goes up and down nice. You hear this. That's a nice sound of it closing. It's not sticking. Uh, now, one of the tricks, or one of the parts of this process, is removing the old stop from the old shaft. Now. This one here, this is from a TR3, but for it, it's anchored the same way. If you look at the the inside section, these pins were were tapered, and the small end has a little a little cone end to it, where the where the top end, the the wider end, is actually a kind of flat. So if, if you were going to remove this, you don't want to be hitting from here inward. You just, you're just fighting yourself. But you come back to here at the small end. Now, I've got this little bench block that we've been using for a million years. But you can, you can do this over the jaws of the open jaws of the vise. And you're going you're gonna to anchor this. You know, you've got your little stubby punch on that piece. Get your nice hammer, and you see how that pulls out that, that, that pin, and that's an original pin. It's got those little serrated lines on it. I'll pull this up a little bit. And that, that will uh, uh, come out. Uh, again, it's a tapered piece. Skinny and skinny end has a little point on it, and the fatter or the wider end is flat, and you can see these little serrations in it. Uh, so once that is out, pull out the little punch, hold it like that. And there we go. So this way, doing it the way I did it, you, you save from damaging, and so you're able to reuse the throttle stop. Uh, uh, again, you've got the shaft. This one's a TR3. You would line up the 
screw holes and uh, 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 make your marks with the file and then you can cut them off with a hacksaw or a lathe. Um, sometimes guys go to machine shops, they feel that they want to, um, they'll have a local machinist do it. And one of the problems with, with machinists is that they look at this as a, a bushing bearing area and they don't, they're not aware or they don't take into account the, the vacuum leak uh, situation. I've seen a lot of times where they've put these in a milling machine, they've bored straight through, did a nice job, but they, they then stop short of the throat of the carburetor, maybe sometimes an eighth or a quarter of an inch, depending on how long the, the bushing is the guy had. And when they gets assembled and it's on the car, you have this tremendous vacuum leak around the bushing, uh, around the shaft and the bushing. So if you are going to have a local machinist do it, make sure he brings those bushings all the way in as close as he can come into into the throat without coming into it uh, because you want to minimize that uh, that air gap around the bushing. If they, if they go in a little too deep and they, they stick in, we, we use a, a drum sander and we go in with the drill press and you kind of just shape the edge of that bushing. Um, the other thing when you're doing an H-type carburetor is it's they generally have wraparound throttle shaft springs. Now what happens with these is as they're as you're opening the butterfly, that spring is closing, you know, or and, and or contracting, and it's actually getting longer. So if you if you put all this together without any clearance, you'll go to open this butterfly and you'll you'll feel the thing will be kind of wedging itself closed. So you want to put when you put the return spring in, you want to give it a little room to grow. Uh, otherwise, it winds up pulling, pulling the butterfly and jamming it into the side of the body. Uh, on our next video, we're going to take take a shot at doing bushings in the HSs, and we'll explain that. But the more the the this is the more complicated one, and again. More importantly is do not let your local machinist pull these bushings out uh, uh, with, or you know because they're going to damage the body. They'll leave a tremendous hole. You'll never find a bushing to fit it and you know you'll be you'll be sort of stuck out in the woods. They've got to be cut out or well, it's cut out. Thank you very much. I uh, hope you learned something and hope uh, I was clear enough on this.